come back tonight. I've got a special message on my heart for tonight's service that you don't want to miss. Uh, we're turning to 1 Samuel chapter 30. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. Back in the Old Testament. Now, I've been screaming and hollering all week long and, and driving and um, I was just sick. I was just sick last night. I got to thinking, you don't get sick? I spent, I think, $170 on gas this week, a car. That's sick, ain't it? I know if you drive a dump truck or, or if you, you know, drive a truck for a living stuff, that ain't much. But just a car or, you know, my forerunner, that's, a, that's ridiculous. And, and guess what? It ain't doing me one bit of good grab about it. <laughs> but I guess we'll just shout and go on, won't we? I don't see nobody walking. Uh, but uh, I'm glad to get to go. Somebody said, well, gas is hat and rose no more than other things in proportion. That still don't make it a bit more fun to pay it. Don't make it a bit more fun. 1 Samuel 30. 1 Samuel 30. Look at verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites, and that Amalek's always a picture of the flesh in that Old Testament, always, Amalekites, Amalek. The Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives, they got them by soap operas, that were therein. They slew not, that's how they get them in the south, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Verse 3. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Everybody's backslid, living for the devil. Then David, see, all that stuff that happened literally then is happening spiritually now. God put them stories in the Old Testament to show us how things are going now. Look at verse 4. Then David and the people that were lift with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. They cried till they run out of tears. You ever done that? Have you ever cried till there wasn't no more tears come out? Buddy, I have. That's the way they did. Verse 5. And David's two wives, he had two wives and they got both of them. Ain't that something? hard for us to understand that, but that's what happened. That might have been a good thing. I don't know. David's two wives were taken. Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. People say, I'm stressed. Look at that. David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. Because of the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. My, 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 what a statement. Now think about this now, and I'll tell you what I'm going to preach on. Old David, son, he had some rough days. He was a great man, if not one of the greatest men in the whole Bible. He made his mistakes, I'll grant you that. He messed up majorly, but I'm telling you, a man, that, a man that hits that many home runs is going to strike out some, too. You can't, some people don't never get up to bat. They don't never hit it or strike out. David knocked some home runs. He struck out, but he knocked some major home runs. And one, in this particular story, his men were all beat up. They took the, the enemy came in, that's the flesh, stole that, took his wives, took everything he had. And, man, I'm telling you, he was stressed out said he was much distressed. And then the people turned on him, talking about stoning him. That's pretty bad when the world it gets your wife and then the, the Christians turn on you and then the world turns against you and the world's trying to kill you and, you, and your wife's gone and your husband's gone and your kids are gone and, and you seem like you're all, and you ain't got nobody. People say, well, I just need somebody to encourage me. David didn't have nobody. But you know what he did? David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Now, I'm going to tell you, in this Christian life, you are going to have to learn how to do that. 
People say, well, n- nobody cares me. Everybody hates me. Nobody loves me. I'm going out and eat worms. You know, you know that old song? You, you don't have to get off that stuff. There's going to have to be a lot of times in your Christian life when you're going to have to say, I looked over here and ain't nobody. I looked over there and ain't nobody. Nobody knows the battle I'm fighting. Lord, it's just me and you. Will you help me? Encourage me in the Lord. So I'm going to preach to you this morning on the subject, How a Christian Can Encourage Himself. David, the Bible said, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Those were discouraging times. Uh, somebody said the devil had a big old, this is just a legend, but he had a big old public auction. And he's selling off a bunch of his tools. And the devil had all these tools laid out there that he, he didn't use much anymore. And he had, you know, it was pride and jealousy and, uh, and hatred and uh, covetousness and all these tools. And he had them all auctioned off. And there's one tool there, and it said, not for sale. And that tool was called discouragement. And he said that's one of the devil's best tricks is just get you discouraged. And if you think about it, that's the truth. If you think about it, when you just get discouraged, he, he kicks your brain in negative mode where you can't see nothing good. You, you can't see no way out. You can't see no hope, no light at the end of the tunnel. He's like, boy, I'm in this tunnel and it's dark. I can't see no way out. That's why people commit suicide. That's why people uh, give up on life. That's why people close themselves up in a dark house and just sit there and sit there in the dark for days and weeks at a time. They can't see no way out. And I, I know the feeling, brother. I've been there. I've been there uh, and seen the light at the end of the tunnel. And it, it was an oncoming train, you know. <laughs> hey, hey, man. I know that feeling. It, it can get rough. Life can get rough. But David was thinking like this, and he was about the bottom of the barrel. He's just about the end of his rope. As uh, somebody said, when when you when you at the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. Amen. And and the Christian life is uh, sometimes when you've got to encourage yourself. So I'm going to talk about some things that a Christian can encourage himself with. I've done these things personally in my life, and I'm going to teach them to you this morning just for a few minutes so that when your time comes, you can encourage yourself in the Lord. First of all, I want us to think about this. I can encourage myself when I think about the faithfulness of God. Now, you can't get much encouragement when you look at people. Because people are fickle. They change. One minute they're for you, the next minute they're against you. Against you. One minute they're for God, next minute for them. You can't depend on people. I had a man tell me the other day, he said, I'm thinking about starting a church, preacher. And he said, I got about 15 people that said they're behind me 100%. I said, don't count on it. Don't count on it. Uh, they, they mean it. They mean it. But you can't count on that. Uh, I, I can't count. You can't count on me. We're not a hundred percent dependable. But I'm gonna tell you. Bless your little hearts this morning. I know somebody that's faithful every morning and every night and every evening and every afternoon and on Sundays and on Mondays and on Tuesdays and on Wednesdays and on Friday morning he's there and on Friday night he's there and when your mama ain't there and your daddy ain't there or your kids ain't there or your boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife or whoever he's always there he's faithful thank God he's faithful I'm telling you what, brother, people pray uh, to God because they know God is faithful. I heard about that little girl, and, and she got down to praying. And she prayed. You know how little kids are. She got down and she prayed for everybody she knew. She said, Lord, she said, Lord, I pray that you'd take care of Mama. And then she said, Lord, I pray that you'd take care of Daddy. And she said, Lord, I pray that you'd take care of little brother. And said, Lord, help little sister. And Lord, help uh, take care of uh, Aunt so-and-so. And Lord, take care of Uncle so-and-so. She prayed for everybody knows. And she stopped and said, Lord, take care of yourself. Because if anything happens to you, we're all sunk. I said, that's true. Amen. If anything was to happen to him, well, but guess what? Got good news. There ain't nothing going to happen to him. Nobody going to knock him off the throne. There ain't nobody going to stop him. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's the same God this morning as he was the day when David killed that giant back in the Old Testament. He's the same God that watched the world form at the voice of his mouth. He's the same God that saw Adam turn from dust into a man and took the uh, rib out of Adam's side and made him a wife. He's the same God that took Cain and Abel through their lives and 
and saved Noah through the flood and brought Abraham them all up through the wilderness and gave Isaac a wife and got Daniel out of the lion's den and Shadrach and Meshach out of the burning fire. He's the same God that got Paul out of jail. He's the same God that made the widow's uh, barrel of meal last a long time. Hey, He can make your groceries last too. He can make the tires on your car last too. He knows where you're at. He knows how much money you owe. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. I've been saved since I was 18 years old and there's never been one second yet when God wasn't faithful to me. I've not been faithful to Him always, but glory, hallelujah, He's always been there for me. Amen? You can encourage yourself in the faithfulness of God. That's right. He knows all, sees all, does all, and still loves you anyway. What a blessing that is. He can be trusted. But I want to say secondly, I ain't got time to get on all this this morning. I want to say secondly this morning, you can encourage yourself in the Word of God. One of the best ways in the world for you to encourage yourself is to get your Bible out and stick your nose in that thing and read it until you get encouraged. I know people say, what's wrong with you? I go over and visit them. They're sitting there watching TV. Now, the best way in the world to really get discouraged is watch the news all the time. Lord, you'll be ready to commit suicide if all you watch is the news. I heard one preacher said, I don't even read the newspaper, don't watch the news no more. It's so depressing. I mean, all they got on there is, you know, who, who, what we going, how in the world are we going to figure out Joran Vandersloot or whoever he is? Uh, what did he do? What did he really didn't do? And you know, people just feed off that stuff. People just feed. And my heart goes out to them people. My heart goes out to, what's her name? Beth Holloway, Twitty, Jug, and all of them. I mean, I, my heart goes out to all of them. But listen, brother, I want to hear something, I want to hear something good. Amen. Uh, you know why they don't have no good? Because people out there, they don't want to hear no good news. They don't want to hear nothing wonderful. If a man gets saved in here this morning, they'd never put that in the paper. But if we all got here and had a fight, it'd be on the front page tomorrow morning. You know why the world feels? But I tell you what, brother, open this thing right here and you'll hear something good. You'll hear something. It is going to turn out all right. I mean, the Lord is coming back. We are going to heaven. We do got a mansion waiting on us. I, we are going to walk on gold street we are going to see jesus in all his glory we're all going to leave our troubles behind we ain't never going to be sick no more we ain't never going to have to pay a bill punch a time clock ride a school bus i mean uh, nurse a sick baby i mean uh, uh hurt a help an ingrown toenail uh, or an outgrown fingernail or or a snake bite or nothing else it's all going to be over you can read that in the bible brother and encourage yourself through the word of god and the bad thing about it is, most of the time when people get discouraged, they just sit there and watch TV and say, I'm discouraged. I'm discouraged. I'm discouraged. I'm more discouraged. I'm more discouraged. Hey, pick that thing up and read about 30 chapters in Psalms. Stick your nose. Psalm 88. I can't tell you how many times that I've got to sleep at night reading Psalm 88. I can't tell you the nights that I couldn't sleep. And I'd lay down and say, well, I'm sleepy now. I can go to sleep. And I lay down, your mind start working. Your mind start working. And, I, and, and the devil says, take some dope. <laughs> and I say, well, I'll take something, tiny old PM or goody PM or something. And that might make me sleep for about an hour. And I have the most ungodly nightmares. I'd rather stay awake than have to sleep like that stuff makes you sleep. Amen? You say, well, I'm addicted to sleeping. You better get off that junk. God will help you to sleep good if, 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 you'll, if you'll get off. You stay awake long enough and get peace in your soul, you'll go to sleep. I mean, sometimes you might have to have something, but not every single night. I, but I remember going to sleep, and I couldn't sleep, and I'd wake back up, and I'd wake back up, and I'd think, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I'm waking up. And then all my problems would hit my mind. And I'd think, what in the world am I going to do? And I'd just wake up and turn the light on and read Psalm 88. Oh, Lord, I have cried night and day unto Thee. Oh, Lord, when will Thou uh, heal my cry? Lover and friend, Thou hast moved far and acquaintance far from me. God, what am I going to do? And it wouldn't be long I'd be going off to sleep, you know. Like that, brother, it got me encouraged in the Lord. I'll, I'll never forget one time when one of my daughters, I won't tell you which one it is. It's not the oldest one. It's not the youngest one. And uh, But I won't mention any names. She's about four years old. I was laying in the bed one night reading my Bible like this, propped up by the pillow. And I was reading my Bible like this, and I heard her come running up steps. That's what it sounds when you run up steps. And uh, uh, up to my bedroom, she, went, she said, 
I said, hey, honey. She used to say, I'm going to go upstairs and sleep with Daddy because he's scared. That's what she used to tell Carrie. <laughs> she said, Daddy's scared. I better go sleep with him. And she'd come running up the steps. And uh, she got in the bed uh, with me. And I was reading my Bible. And I noticed her. I could see her looking at me like that. And all of a sudden, she just jumped out of the bed and run down them steps. Run down them steps. And about 30 seconds, here she come back up. She went down her room got her little bitty Bible. One of them little pink ones, you know, they buy them when they're little and had her name on it. And she got right beside me in the bed like this. And she got a pillow and she's trying to do just like I was. She didn't know if her Bible was upside down, it, wrong side out or what, you know. She just looked at it like that. I looked over at her and grinned. And I said, the Bible's true, honey. She said, all of it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm glad I could look back at my four-year-old girl. I'm glad for this book right here. Let that little girl know tell what she'd have to face in life and where she might, what life might take her when I'm dead and gone. I'm glad I could look back at her and say, Yes, baby, it's all true. I didn't say it that loud, but that's what I told her. <laughs> I said it's all true. Lord, help, I'd hate to been some of these preachers that I'd have to look at her and say, well, honey, it's all true except for some parts that wasn't translated correctly. And Adam and Eve wasn't real people. They're just a principle. In the, and Satan was just a principle of good and evil. That's a bunch of junk, buddy. I'm glad I could look at my four-year-old girl and say, you've got a book that'll take you through life. You've got a book that you can count on when you're dying. You've got a book that's always right. Buddy, people, we just forget about how we ought to appreciate our Bible. Our Bible. Well, listen, science changes their mind every few years. There was a there was a time when major scientists believed the earth was flat. Then they found out it was wrong, had to change. They all they're teaching evolution now. If the Lord don't come in another hundred years, they won't even believe evolution. This DNA stuff and all that stuff has knocked that thing in the head. And an honest, honest scientist now will tell you there's no way in the world that life could have evolved from nothing. It's too complicated. We're all different, and that DNA and animals and plants, brother, they'll they'll change your belief about every fifty or hundred years. Son, you can get a hold of this old book right here, that 1611 Black Back 66, and say, honey, you can count on it when you're in school. You can count on it when you get married. You can count on it when you're raising your young'uns. You can count on it. You can encourage yourself through the Word of God. I'm telling you, brother, stick your nose in that book. That book, it'll keep you from sin. That book will show you what to do. That book will lead you out of the wilderness, show you what to do in your life. There ain't no book like that book right there. Stick your nose in it. Some people say, well, have you read Brother So-and-So's new book? Have you read Dr. So-and-So's new book? Have you read? No, I ain't. Amen. I mean, I've read Psalms, though. I've read God's old book. I've read Proverbs. And I've read Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Ecclesiastes and Daniel. I, like that one old preacher said one time, the old black preacher said, have you read this commentary? He said, that Bible sure do shine a lot of light on them there commentaries. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, that's the book of all books. It's a lamp under my feet. It's a light under my path. It's that book right there that'll show you the way out of the mess you're in. And David encouraged himself with the Word of God. Let me say thirdly, I'll hurry this morning. You can encourage yourself. Are you discouraged this morning? You can encourage yourself, number three, by the fellowship of the saints. Buddy, that's why you ought to go to church. It'll do you good to just fellowship with the saints. Let me tell you something, people. Now, I've been pastoring church 28 years, and I've seen a lot of people come and a lot go, and I'm going to tell you something. Money can't pay for what some of you people have got here this morning. You just don't. Some of you this morning feel like a thousand pounds have been lifted off you since you came in this building this morning. People say, oh, you don't have to go to church. I'm sick of hearing that. We don't have to go to church. Glory to God, we want to go to church. Church helps us. It does me good to see this choir. It blessed my heart to see little Ashley get up here and sing that song when she's just a bus kid come off the bus from the door. It blessed my heart when I see the shining light girls get up and sing and raise their hand. It encourages me. I'm encouraged through the fellowship of the saints. Nothing in the world, brother, will do you like getting together with a bunch of Christians and them all get, you know, I mean, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're playing ball and you're getting beat. I mean, we've been getting beat in the ball 
football game, and at halftime we'd go in there, and boy, we'd get in there, and, and the boys say, come on, boys, we can do it, come on, boys. And the coach would say, now, boys, we're better than this. We're a better team than they are. Let's get on the ball. And them words helped me. They, they helped me. They made me want to go back out there and fight and win the battle. And boy, when I come out there and all them fans was cheering, that made me, boy, I said, let's go, amen. Let's go. And church is the same way. It's the same way. Sometimes I feel, walk in there and I think, Lord, I don't know if I can make it or not. Then here's all our fans and we're cheering in a great compass, a great cloud of witnesses and the great grandstands in heaven and Moses and all them up there, all them old saints of God saying, come on, castle. Is that the best you can do? Preach it, son. I quit fooling around. Are you going to preach or not? I'm saying, I'm doing the best I can. I'm screaming my head off. I'm a sweating like a dog. And the Lord says, come on, boy. Let her rip. Amen. I'm telling you what, brother. We don't know. Oh, glory to God. I'm about ready to run out there in the middle of the highway and take a shouting spell. I'm encouraged by the saints of God. I'm encouraged by the saints of the Lord. It'll encourage you to get around a bunch of Christian people. Can you feel it? Can you feel him? He's here. Can you feel him? He's here. I'm telling you, brother. I'm telling you, our God is still on his throne and he's able to help us and encourage us here this morning. Amen. The fellowship of the saints. I talked to a boy one time. He was backslidden. He come to church and everybody's shouting, happy like you are this morning. He said, I've been missing a lot, ain't I? You said it, buddy. You've been missing it. If you miss church, you miss it. If you miss tonight, you're going to miss it. I'm praying we'll have a gully washer. And that ain't the Bible, but you know what I'm talking about. Amen. I'm telling you, listen, I see people serving God that's a lot worse off than I am, and it encourages me. Amen. You say, well, I just I got this little old young'un. Yeah, you see somebody's got three, and they're serving God. You say, I have to work hard every day. You see somebody having worked two jobs. You say, well, me and my husband, yeah, yeah, you'll see somebody that's worse off than you are. There's a lady right now, Miss Sue knows who I'm talking about. Her name is, what is her name? May. Miss May. She sits about right in here, beside Miss Shirley here, uh, right there in her church in Statesville. That woman, I guess now, has not eaten one bite of food in 20 years. She had a stroke, and they had to feed her. She's got tubes going in, and that's how, that's how she gets her nurse. But she has not eaten one bite in 20 years. She has not spoke one word in 20 years. Not one word. And when I preach revival down there, Tabernacle Baptist Church in Stageville, she's there every single night. And she's like this, and she's doing like this while I'm preaching. And she goes on visitation every single week with the ladies of that church. Never misses a week going on visitation going out witnessing and she can't talk you say well my goodness preacher why well, I, I had to put up my beans and i ain't i'm about to commit suicide she can't even talk you say well, what good does it do her to go on visitation her and the pastor's wife rides around and she prays and she just points stop that house stop that house and they go in there and the pastor's wife witnesses stuff like that encourages me i think good lord I ain't got pain in my body. I am, you know, I am, I'm, I can free white in 21. I can run out here and run around. I can go anywhere I want to go. I ought to be shouting my fool head off. I ain't got no reason to be discouraged. Amen, people. Amen. We ought to thank God. He's been good to us. When you go to see, you're always somebody worse off than you are. You ought to thank God and encourage yourself with a fellowship of the saints. I got a letter here in my Bible that carry wrote me my oldest daughter she got married and there's been lots of times when I've been hurt and discouraged I'll pull that letter out and read it just read it again I just wave that the devil say ha 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 you ain't won all the victory old smutty face amen I don't really say that to him but that's why I think I'm scared of him really amen but I'm going to tell you something brother That'll encourage you. Instead of looking at, oh, no, I'm kidding me. Oh, no. Look at them poems they wrote you. And look at them Father's Day cards and Mother's Day cards. Amen. Encourage you with the fellowship of the saints. Let me say fourthly this morning, I'll hurry. We encourage ourselves with the Spirit of God on the inside of us. 
Amen. I'll never forget laying in my bed at night. Couldn't go to sleep. I'd finally get mad and turn the radio on. And it was 20 years ago, back when that song, the McCameys had that song, God on the Mountain. Remember that song? He's the God of the Mountain. He's still God in the Valley. And that song, Old Peg McCamey. I'm telling you, I remember for a time, for a few years, every time you turn the radio on, that thing is on. And I mean, I'd hear her, and I had her shouting, memorized. I could tell when she died. You know, like that. And, and you know how I can't do it exactly like she does, but uh, she'd jump up and down like that. Boy, an old peg, she'd shout. Have you ever heard old peg saying, hey, I got on the mountain. That's blessed everybody in here. And I'm telling you what, brother, I'd turn that radio on on Big Waggy. And I'm fixing to preach on there in just about 30 minutes, 35 minutes on 105.3 FM. And, buddy, I'd turn that big 100,000-watt station on down there in Gaffney. And, that, and she'd come on there saying, life is easy. When you're up on the mountain, you've got things like... You know, I care. And, 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 and I thought, yeah, that's right. It is easy when everything's going good. You know, everybody's happy and hugging necks. But then things change. And it will change for everybody. And you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith. Because you're never alone. The God of the mountain is still God in the valley. And brother, I'm telling you, before that song got over, I'd be in there saying, Glory to God, I feel like traveling on. Let's get up and hit it another lick. Amen. <laughs> I mean, let's go another mile. Let's try it another day. Some of you come in here this morning. You come in here this morning. Uh, come on, shine light girls. Y'all get up here. Bunch of you, get up here behind them and help them. Jennifer, listen. You come in here this morning. And buddy, I'm telling you what you thought. Lord, I'm so low. I don't think I can make it another mile. Come on, little Ashley. All of you. Hey, listen, brother, you, you come in here this morning. And you thought, how am I going to make it? How how am I going to make it? How am I going to make it? And I'm telling you this morning, you just haul off, rear back, and hit the devil again and say, glory to God, I'm going to go another mile when everything falls apart. Just praise His name and get out here this morning get you some help. Play it, sister. Now, this way, I'm not even going to finish my message this morning, but if you need help this morning, if you need help, you come right now. Come on, right now. Let's stand.